my wife hid her affair for years while I worked abroad. So I caught her, and now she's lost everything. I'm 49 now, and looking back, everything kind of started falling apart about 10 years ago. At the time, I was married to my wife Karen, and we had two kids. My daughter Sarah, who was 12, and my son Mike, who was 9. We were living in Texas, where we had a pretty decent life. We even had a small family business that we ran for years. But then the economy tanked, and well, everything went downhill from there. See, back then, there was this huge financial mess called the Great Recession. It was everywhere on the news, and people were losing their jobs, houses, everything. Our business didn't survive either, and honestly, I felt like I was sinking. I was trying to keep things together, but no matter what I did, it seemed like I couldn't catch a break. Our savings were getting eaten up, and there were times when I didn't know how we were going to pay the bills. I remember feeling the pressure on my shoulders every single day, and I knew I had to do something different if we were going to make it. So when I got offered a job overseas in Dubai, I jumped at it. It wasn't an easy decision. In fact, it was probably the hardest one I ever made. But it was a big opportunity, and we needed the money. I remember sitting down with Karen and telling her about the offer. I told her it was the only way to get us back on our feet, and she seemed to understand. But there was this look in her eyes, like she wasn't entirely convinced. At the time, I didn't think much of it. I figured she was just worried about the move and being apart. Anyway, I packed my bags and headed to Dubai, promising Karen and the kids that I'd visit home every six months. The plan was to set up shop there, earn enough money, and eventually move back once things were more stable. I wasn't happy about leaving, but I kept telling myself that it was for them, that I was doing the right thing. You know, trying to be the good husband and dad, taking care of the family, all that. The first few months were tough. Dubai was a whole new world, different culture, different everything. But I threw myself into the work. I worked long hours, built connections, and slowly things started picking up. It was lonely, though. I mean, it's one thing to be busy all day, but coming home to an empty apartment night after night gets to you. I miss my family like crazy, and the only thing that kept me going was the thought that one day I'd be back home with them. I kept my promise and flew back every six months. I tried to squeeze in as much time with the kids and Karen as I could, it wasn't the same. Sarah and Mike were growing up, and I felt like I was missing out on their lives. Karen, well, she seemed distant. At first I thought it was just because she was stressed from handling everything alone, managing the house, the kids, and everything else. I mean, it's a lot for one person so I didn't push her on it. I figured she needed time to adjust, just like I did. But every time I came back, it felt like there was this wall between us. I'd suggest that maybe they could move to Dubai with me. Now that things were going well, and I had a place set up. But Karen wasn't interested. She kept saying the kids were doing well in school, and that she didn't want to pull them away from their friends. I got it. Nobody wants to uproot their kids. But a part of me wondered if there was more to it. Still, I let it slide. I didn't want to cause any more stress, especially with everything we'd already been through. When the kids finally finished high school and started college in Houston, I brought it up again. I figured it was the perfect time for Karen to join me. The kids were grown, and they had their own lives now. So why not? But again, she shot down the idea. This time, she said she didn't want to leave her mom alone. That it would be too much for her to handle. I suggested that we could bring her mom with us to Dubai, make it a fresh start for all of us. But she just wasn't interested. At this point, I started to feel something wasn't right. I mean, I'd done everything I could. I built a life for us out there, and I was ready to have my family back. But she seemed like she didn't want to be with me at all. I kept trying to convince myself that she just needed more time. That maybe she was scared of the change. But deep down, it didn't sit well. I remember the last visit I made before everything started to really go south. I had this big plan. This idea that I was going to shut down the business in Dubai and move back to Texas for good. I thought it was the answer to all our problems. I mean, if the issue was distance, then the solution was simple, right? Just close up shop, head home, and everything would be fine. I thought she'd be happy, relieved even. But when I told her, she didn't react the way I expected. She seemed irritated, almost like she was annoyed with me. She said, why would you do that? You've worked so hard to set everything up there, and now you just want to throw it all away. I was confused. I thought she'd be excited for me to come back, for us to finally be together as a family again. But instead, it felt like she didn't even want me there. 
that's when I started feeling this knot in my stomach, like maybe I was missing something. It wasn't just her reaction that threw me off. A day later, my mom called me up telling me the exact same thing, telling me not to rush back, and that I was making a mistake by closing the business. Now, I hadn't mentioned my plans to anyone but Karen, so I knew she must have talked to my mom about it. I tried not to read into it too much, but it felt like they were plotting something together. It made me doubt my decision and everything else. Maybe I was being paranoid, or maybe I was just looking for answers that weren't there. After that, I decided to drop the idea of moving back, at least for a while, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I'd go days without calling just to see if Karen would reach out, but she didn't. Our conversations became quick and to the point, almost like we were just checking off a box. I'd ask about the kids, she'd tell me they were fine, and that was it. It felt like we were strangers living separate lives, I tried bringing it up a few times, asking if she was happy, or if she felt like something was wrong between us, but she'd always brush it off. She'd say I was overthinking and that everything was fine, but it didn't feel fine. I kept telling myself I was just stressed out from work, that the distance was messing with my head, but deep down, I knew something was changing. And the worst part was, I didn't know how to fix it. So, after that last visit, things really started to change between Karen and me. It's like all those small doubts I had were suddenly getting bigger, and I couldn't ignore them anymore. I mean, I'd come back home expecting things to feel normal, but they didn't. It felt like I was some stranger dropping by instead of a husband coming home to his wife. Every time I left, I'd hoped that the next trip would be different, but it never was. Karen and I started talking less and less. It was weird, and honestly, a bit painful. I'd send a text, and sometimes it'd take her hours, even days to respond. When we did talk, it was all just surface-level stuff. She'd tell me about how the kids were doing, or how her mom was, but she never really talked about herself. And when I asked, she'd just brush it off like her life didn't matter. Everything's fine, she'd say. But it didn't feel fine. It felt like she was keeping me at arm's length, and I didn't know why. I started testing things. I'd go a whole day without messaging her, just to see if she'd notice or ask what was going on. But most of the time, she didn't even seem to care. Days turned into weeks where our communication was barely anything beyond a quick, how's it going, or kids are fine. I could feel the distance between us getting wider. But every time I tried to bring it up, she'd just tell me I was being paranoid. She'd say I was overthinking everything and that we were fine. But I didn't believe it. One time, I asked her straight up if she still wanted to be with me. It was one of those late night calls when you just can't hold it in anymore. I was tired of pretending everything was okay when it clearly wasn't. But instead of reassuring me, she got defensive. She said, why would you even ask that? Of course I want to be with you. But the way she said it felt like she was trying to convince herself more than me. Then there was this one weird thing that really got to me. Karen started becoming super protective of her phone. Now, before, she was never like that. She'd leave her phone lying around and it was no big deal. But lately, she wouldn't even let it out of her sight. Even when we were on video calls, if her phone went off, she'd make some excuse and turn off the camera or say she had to go. I didn't know what to make of it, but I couldn't help but feel like she was hiding something. There was this one time when I came back for a short visit. I was only home for a week and I noticed she'd always keep her phone face down or take it with her even if she just left the room for a minute. It was little stuff, but it added up. I tried to play it off, thinking maybe she was just being more careful, but it didn't sit right with me. When I asked her why she was acting weird with her phone, she just laughed it off, saying I was being paranoid again. You've been gone so long, you're starting to imagine things, she joked. But it didn't feel like a joke. After that, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was going on. It's not like I wanted to think that way about her. I'd trusted Karen for years and we'd been through a lot together, but everything was adding up and it was hard to ignore. I mean, we'd spent over a decade married and I thought I knew her better than anyone. But now, I wasn't so sure. What really got to me was how distant she was becoming, not just emotionally but physically. I tried to get close to her during that visit, hug her, kiss her, but she felt cold, like she'd go through the motions but it was like she was holding back. At one point, I even asked her if something was wrong, but she just shrugged me off. I'm just stressed, she said. There's a lot going on with the kids and your mom's not doing great. She always had an excuse. It felt like she was putting up walls and no matter how hard I tried to break them down, she wouldn't let me in. It made me start questioning everything. Was it me? Was it the distance? Or was there something else going on? Around that same time, my mom started acting weird too. 
She'd call me up out of nowhere, asking how things were going and giving me advice I didn't ask for. She told me I needed to focus on my business in Dubai and not worry so much about what was happening back home. Now I love my mom, but it felt like she was reading from Karen's script. It was almost like they were in on something together. I know that sounds paranoid, but when your gut's telling you something's off, it's hard to ignore. One night after a long day of work in Dubai, I was sitting alone in my apartment, thinking about everything. I was feeling really torn. On one hand, I wanted to believe that Karen and my mom were just worried about me and trying to help. On the other, it felt like they were pushing me away, and I didn't know why. I even started to wonder if Karen had found someone else. I mean, why else would she act so distant? But then I'd feel guilty for thinking that way. She was my wife. If I couldn't trust her, then who could I trust? Still, the doubt was eating at me. I started paying more attention to everything she said, every little detail, trying to find clues that would prove or disprove what I was feeling. But she was careful. Too careful, if you ask me. And every time I brought up my concerns, she just brushed them off or changed the subject. There was this one moment that really stuck with me. I was sitting on the couch, scrolling through my phone while she was in the kitchen. Her phone buzzed and she picked it up right away. But instead of reading the message, she looked up at me. It was like she was checking to see if I noticed. When she realized I was watching, she quickly put her phone away and went back to cooking. I remember feeling this knot in my stomach like something wasn't right. I asked her later who it was and she just said it was her mom. But the way she avoided my eyes when she said it made me feel like she was lying. The distance between us kept growing. I'd lie in bed, staring at the ceiling, wondering if I was the one messing things up by being so far away. But then I'd remind myself that I was out here for them, for Karen and the kids. It wasn't like I wanted to be gone. I was just trying to do the best I could to provide for them. But none of that seemed to matter anymore. I started feeling isolated, like I was stuck in some kind of limbo where I couldn't go back but couldn't move forward either. Every time I thought about packing up and moving back to Texas, I'd hear Karen's voice in my head, telling me I was being too hasty. I'd think about my mom's warnings and I'd second-guess myself all over again. It was like I was trapped, not knowing what the right move was. In the end, I decided to stay put in Dubai for a while longer, trying to keep my mind focused on work. But even then, it was like my heart wasn't in it anymore. I'd get up, go through the motions, and come home to an empty apartment every night. And all the while, the doubt kept growing, clawing at the back of my mind, making me wonder if I was missing something right in front of me. I reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore. The doubt, the distance, and the constant feeling that something was wrong, it all got to me. Every day I felt like I was walking around with a weight on my shoulders, and the more I tried to push it away, the heavier it got. I knew something was going on, and no matter how much I tried to convince myself that it was just in my head, it didn't feel like that. So I made a decision. I was going to find out what was happening, one way or another. I booked a ticket home, but didn't tell anyone. Not Karen, not my mom, not even the kids. I figured if I was wrong, then great. But if I was right, at least I'd know for sure. And honestly, the not knowing was worse than anything else. When I landed in Texas, I was anxious. My mind was racing, and I kept thinking about all the possibilities, everything I might find. I got to the house early in the morning, using the spare key to let myself in. The place was quiet, and for a second I thought maybe I'd overreacted. Maybe Karen had just been tired or stressed, and I'd been blowing things out of proportion. But then, as I walked through the house, I noticed small things that felt off. There were things out of place, like Karen's clothes folded neatly on the couch instead of in the bedroom, and her phone charger left plugged into the kitchen wall when she always kept it by the bed. It was small stuff, but enough to make my nerves spike. I kept telling myself to calm down, but every step I took felt like I was getting closer to something I wasn't ready to face. Then I heard footsteps coming from the kitchen. I turned the corner and saw Karen standing there, looking completely shocked to see me. Her reaction was everything I needed to know. She froze for a moment, and then she forced a smile, but it didn't reach her eyes. Oh, you're home early, she said, trying to play it off like she was happy to see me. But I could tell she wasn't. I kept it casual. I told her I had a light workload for the month, and thought it'd be a nice surprise to come home and spend some time together. She went along with it, but the whole time, I could see how tense she was. She was asking questions, almost too many, about why I didn't tell her I was coming and how long I planned to stay. It was like she was trying to figure out how much time she had to prepare or hide something. I shrugged it off, but inside I knew she was hiding something. 
Over the next couple of days, I paid close attention to everything. I tried to act normal, like I wasn't suspicious, but I watched every move she made. I noticed she was still being weird with her phone, always keeping it close, always checking it when she thought I wasn't looking. It was almost like she was waiting for a message or trying to hide who she was talking to. I couldn't ignore it anymore. I had to know what was going on, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I started snooping. When she was asleep or in the shower, I'd check her phone, but she had it locked up tight. No messages, no missed calls, nothing out of the ordinary. It was like she had wiped everything clean. I felt like an idiot, but it just made me more determined to get to the bottom of it. One night, while she was out running errands, I decided to take things a step further. I put a GPS tracker in her car. I know, it's extreme, and it's not something I'm proud of, but I needed answers. I couldn't live with the constant doubt anymore, and if she was up to something, I wanted to know for sure. The first couple of times I tracked her, everything seemed normal. She'd go to the grocery store, visit her mom's place, or pick up some stuff from the pharmacy. But then, one day I saw her go to this small hardware store across town. It was a place I'd never heard her mention before, and I'd never seen her go there during my visits. I waited, thinking maybe she was just grabbing some supplies or whatever, but she stayed there for a long time. I drove over, parked a few blocks away, and watched from a distance. The place looked closed, lights off and everything, but Karen's car was parked out front. After a while, the store owner came out and looked around, almost like he was checking if anyone was watching. Then he pulled down the shutters with Karen still inside. My heart sank. I knew right then that I was onto something, but I needed more proof. I followed her again a few days later. Same routine. She went to the hardware store, and the owner shut the place down as soon as she walked in. This time I stayed longer, waiting to see if anything would happen. I felt this anger bubbling up inside me, but I had to keep my cool. If I went in guns blazing without any solid proof, she'd just lie or come up with some excuse. A couple of days later, I decided to test the waters. I casually asked Karen about the store, pretending like I saw it while driving past. She hesitated for a second, but then said she was helping out with some home improvement project for her mom. She said it so smoothly I almost believed her, but something in her eyes gave her away. It was like she was waiting to see if I'd buy her story. I just nodded and played along, but I knew she was lying. The next time I tracked her, I parked even closer. I watched as she got out of her car, and met the store owner outside. They talked for a bit, and then I saw him put his arm around her. It wasn't just a friendly gesture. The way he pulled her close, it was like they were more than friends. My blood was boiling. I wanted to confront them right then and there, but I forced myself to wait. After they went inside and he pulled the shutters down again, I got out of my car and walked up to the store. I knocked on the door a few times, but there was no answer. I could hear movement inside, like they were scrambling. It took everything in me not to kick the door down, but I knew I had to play this smart. If I blew my cover now, I'd never get the truth. I stepped back, took a deep breath, and walked away, feeling more conflicted than ever. Part of me wanted to keep digging, to find out everything, but another part of me didn't want to know. I didn't want to face the reality that Karen, the woman I'd trusted for so long, was betraying me. But I had to know the truth, even if it meant confronting my worst fears. Over the next few days, I kept a closer eye on her. She had this routine, going out in the afternoons, sometimes visiting her mom, other times, running errands. Every time she left, I followed. It was exhausting, but I needed to catch her slipping up. I needed that one piece of undeniable proof. It was like waiting for a storm to hit. I knew something was coming, but I didn't know when or how bad it would be. I just had to be ready. After everything I'd seen, and all the doubts swirling in my head, I knew I couldn't just sit back and watch anymore. It was eating me up inside. All those times I'd convinced myself to stay calm, to play it smart, felt like they were only giving Karen more chances to cover her tracks. I had to do something, and I had to do it soon. So I made a plan to catch her in the act, and this time, there was no turning back. I kept tracking her movements for the next few days, trying to find a pattern. She had this habit of going out in the afternoons, saying she was visiting her mom or running errands, but I knew better now. I just needed to be ready for the right moment. Then, one day, everything lined up. She left the house, and her car's tracker led me straight to that same hardware store. I parked my car a block away, far enough not to be noticed, but close enough to keep an eye on the place. My heart was pounding as I watched her pull up, get out, and walk toward the store. The guy came out to greet her, and they exchanged a quick look before heading inside. 
Just like before, he pulled the shutters down, closing up shop with Karen still in there. This was it. I knew this was my chance. I got out of the car and walked up to the store, my hands shaking with a mix of anger and adrenaline. When I reached the door, I knocked hard. At first, there was no response. Just silence. I banged again, louder this time, and finally the guy opened the door a crack. He looked surprised to see me, like he wasn't expecting any visitors, let alone me. Where's Karen? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady, but I could feel the rage boiling up inside me. The guy hesitated, his eyes shifting like he was looking for a way out. He didn't say anything, and that was all the confirmation I needed. I pushed the door open and walked in, not giving him a chance to stop me. The store was dimly lit, and most of the shelves were covered with tarps, like the place wasn't even in business. I moved quickly through the aisles, following the sounds coming from the back. My heart was racing, and every step felt heavier than the last. Then I found her. Karen was there, in the storeroom, in a position I wish I could unsee. She looked up, and the shock on her face was everything I needed to know. She'd been caught. The moment froze for a second, everything crashing down on me at once. All the suspicion, all the doubt, it all became real. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but there it was, right in front of me. The guy, her so-called friend, or whatever he was, tried to step in between us, but I wasn't having it. I lunged at him, shoving him out of the way, and yelled at Karen, demanding to know how long this had been going on. She was scrambling, pulling herself together, and for a moment, she just stared at me, eyes wide, like a deer caught in headlights. She tried to say something, but her voice was shaky. The guy jumped back in, grabbing me by the arm, and things got heated real fast. We started shoving each other, and he tried to drag me out of the storeroom. Karen was yelling at both of us to stop, but everything felt like it was moving in slow motion. I managed to push him off and got one good punch in, knocking him back. I could feel the anger and betrayal driving every move I made. Karen finally stepped in between us, telling the guy to back off. She was crying now, tears streaming down her face as she begged me to leave, saying we could talk about this later at home. But I wasn't leaving without answers. Why, Karen? I demanded. How long have you been doing this? I could barely keep my voice steady. The anger was mixing with this awful, sinking feeling of betrayal, and I needed to know why. Karen stood there, wiping her eyes, and finally, she started to speak. It's not what you think, she said. But I wasn't having any of it. How long? I shouted again, and she flinched, finally admitting. It's been a few years, okay? But it doesn't mean anything. A few years. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. She was standing there, acting like it was no big deal, like this wasn't the complete destruction of our marriage. I couldn't even look at her. I felt my whole body go numb. A few years. I repeated. More to myself than to her. All this time, and you just kept lying to me. She tried to explain, saying something about how lonely she'd been and how hard it was with me gone for so long. She said she didn't want to hurt me, but she didn't know how to cope with the distance. It was excuse after excuse, and I just stood there, letting the words wash over me. None of it mattered. The fact was, she chose to betray me instead of being honest. I looked at the guy, and he had this smug look on his face, like he thought he'd gotten away with something. You need to leave, I told him, my voice barely above a growl. This is between me and my wife. He hesitated, and I stepped forward, making it clear I wasn't going to let him stay. Finally, he backed off, muttering something under his breath as he left the storeroom. Karen tried to reach for my hand, but I pulled away. Don't, I said. Just don't. She started crying again, pleading with me to go home with her so we could talk, but I wasn't in the mood for talking. I felt like my whole world had come crashing down, and there was no going back from this. She kept saying she was sorry, that it wasn't what I thought, but I didn't want to hear it. You had years to tell me the truth, I said. You had years to fix this, and instead you chose this guy over our marriage. She didn't know what to say. She just stood there, crying, while I felt everything I'd built with her slip away. All the trust, all the love. It felt like it had been torn to shreds in that moment. I told her I needed space, that I couldn't be around her right now. She tried to protest, but I was done listening. I walked out of that store, not looking back, and drove straight to my mom's house. My head was spinning, and all I could think about was how everything had fallen apart. I needed answers, and if Karen wasn't going to give them to me, then maybe my mom would. When I got to her place, I didn't waste any time. I walked in, and the first thing I said was, you knew, didn't you? 
My mom tried to act surprised, but I could see right through it. Don't lie to me, I told her. You knew about Karen's affair. She just sat there, looking guilty, and that was all the confirmation I needed. She started to cry, saying she didn't want to tell me because she thought it would destroy everything. You think this doesn't hurt? I shot back. Keeping it from me, pretending everything was fine, how is that any better? My mom reached for my hand, telling me she was sorry, but I couldn't handle it. I pulled away, feeling like I'd been betrayed all over again, not just by Karen, but by my own family. I felt like I didn't know who I could trust anymore. I told her I needed to be alone, and before she could say anything else, I walked out. I needed space to process everything, to figure out what I was going to do next. My marriage was falling apart, and my family had lied to me. It felt like everything I thought I knew had been ripped away, and I didn't know where to go from there. After leaving my mom's place, I drove around for hours, not knowing where to go or what to do next. My head was a mess, and everything felt like it was spinning out of control. I mean, how was I supposed to process all of this? My wife had been cheating on me for years, and my own mother had known about it and said nothing. It was like every single thing I believed in had been flipped upside down. I ended up parking by a small park we used to take the kids to when they were little. I sat there, staring at nothing, feeling like I was stuck in some nightmare I couldn't wake up from. Part of me wanted to go back to the house, to confront Karen again, to scream and yell and demand why she had thrown away everything we'd built together. But another part of me felt drained, like I didn't have the energy for it anymore. I was just done. For the next couple of days, I stayed at a cheap motel. I didn't tell anyone where I was. I needed time to think, to figure out what my next move was going to be. Karen was blowing up my phone with calls and texts, begging me to come back so we could talk, but I ignored her. She had her chance to be honest, and she blew it. I wasn't ready to hear any more of her excuses. My mom tried reaching out too, leaving voicemails, saying she was worried about me and that she was sorry. But every time I listened to her voice, all I could think about was how she'd looked me in the eye and lied, pretending everything was fine when she knew the truth. I couldn't get past that. It felt like my own family had betrayed me, and I didn't know if I'd ever be able to forgive her for that. On the third day, I decided to pack my bags and head to Houston. My daughters were there, living on their own, and I needed to see them. They were grown now, but they deserved to know what was going on. I didn't want Karen getting to them first and twisting the story to make herself look like the victim. I'd seen enough of that already, and I wasn't going to let her manipulate our kids. When I got to Houston, I met up with them at a coffee shop. They were happy to see me at first, but then they saw the look on my face and I could tell they knew something was wrong. We sat down and I told them everything. The affair, how long it had been going on, and how my mom had known the whole time. I watched their faces change as the reality of it hit them. My oldest daughter, Sarah, was angry. She said she always had this weird feeling about her mom, that sometimes things didn't add up. She even mentioned seeing Karen act a little too friendly with some guy when she'd visited home once, but she brushed it off, thinking it was nothing. Now it all made sense to her. My younger one, Mike, was quieter. He seemed hurt and confused, like he didn't know how to process it all. I could tell he was trying to stay strong, but I could see the pain in his eyes. He'd always been closer to Karen, and I knew this was going to hit him harder. I felt awful seeing my kids go through this, knowing that the family they thought they had wasn't real. It felt like I'd failed them somehow, like I should have seen the signs sooner. Sarah said she was done with her mom. She didn't want to hear any excuses and told me she'd already blocked Karen's number. She was furious, and honestly, I didn't blame her. But Mike, he was more torn. He didn't want to cut off his mom, even after everything. I told him it was his choice. I wasn't going to force him to take sides, but I reminded him to be careful. I knew Karen, and I knew she'd try to twist things to get him on her side. After I talked to the kids, I drove back to the house. I figured it was time to face Karen again and deal with whatever came next. I needed to figure out where we were headed and what the future looked like now that everything was out in the open. When I walked in, Karen was waiting for me, sitting at the kitchen table. She looked like a mess, red eyes, tissues everywhere, but I wasn't feeling sorry for her. She got up when she saw me and tried to hug me, but I stepped back. We need to talk, I said, and she nodded, sitting back down. We sat there for what felt like ages, just staring at each other. Finally, she started talking. She went on about how she felt lonely all those years I was away, how she was struggling, and how she made a mistake. She tried to make it sound like it was just some meaningless thing, like she was doing it to fill the void, but I wasn't buying it. You had years to tell me the truth, I said, years, and instead you chose to lie. 
She kept apologizing, saying she never meant to hurt me and that she didn't want to lose me, but the more she talked, the more I realized she was just scared of losing her comfortable life. It wasn't about me. It was about the security and the money. I could see right through her now, and all the trust one used to have in her was gone. I asked her how many people knew about the affair. She hesitated, and that told me everything. My mom knew, right? I asked, even though I already knew the answer. She nodded, saying that my mom found out a few years back but promised not to say anything. She said she didn't want to ruin the family, Karen added. It felt like a punch to the gut hearing that excuse again. It was like they thought keeping me in the dark was doing me a favor. At that point, I was done. I got up, grabbed my things, and told her I was leaving. She tried to follow me, crying and begging me to stay, but I couldn't even look at her anymore. I told her I needed space and that I wasn't coming back until I figured out what I wanted to do next. I wasn't ready to talk about divorce or what would happen to the house. I just needed to get out of there. I drove back to the motel, feeling a mix of anger and relief. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I had some control over my life again. I didn't know what the future was going to look like, but at least I was done pretending everything was okay when it clearly wasn't. I decided to cut off Karen financially. If she wanted to stay in that house, she'd have to figure it out herself. I wasn't going to keep supporting her while she lived off my hard work and betrayed me behind my back. I called my daughters and told them what I was planning. Sarah was all for it. She said Karen needed to face the consequences of her actions. Mike was quieter, and I could tell he was struggling with it. I told him that it was his decision if he wanted to help his mom, but that I wasn't going to be part of it anymore. He needed to know the truth and make his own choices. So that's where things stand now. I'm still at the motel, trying to figure out my next move. Part of me wants to pack up and go back to Dubai to put as much distance between myself and this mess as possible. But another part of me knows that running away won't solve anything. Hit that subscribe button now, or you'll be the one asking, wait, what did I miss, while everyone else is cracking up.